Good afternoon everybody. It's a cold and wintry day here in Australia and so I thought I would do a little experiment on something that's been plaguing me for quite a while. And what that is, is using uh, switching boost converters with analog and in particular audio equipment. Something that can be a very frustrating experience. Why can it be frustrating you might ask? Because you probably have run into the problem where you build a switching circuit you plug into your amplifier you then slowly turn up the volume and you hear something like this So your first point of call is probably to add a capacitor, but when you do it you find that it makes almost no difference at all to the kind of noise that you're experiencing. So why does it make such a horrible noise? Well, if we get our oscilloscope out and connect it to the output of this boost converter and we have a look at the oscilloscope screen you can see that there is all kinds of high frequency noise at about 260 millivolts peak to peak or so so what we're going to do next is try to make a circuit that deals with that problem so now we know what the problem is with the switching inverter let's look at how we're going to try and fix the problem and the circuit that I'm going to try to use to filter the noise is this one here and what this consists of is a LC low pass filter and then followed by a circuit known as a capacitive multiplier and what a capacitive multiplier does is it's basically a voltage follower made from a transistor and the effect of it is that it multiplies the capacitance on the base by the transistor's beta. So here we've got about 100 microfarads and our 2N2222 has a gain of let's say 100 and so what we end up seeing on the output is it's like we've put an equivalent capacitance of 20,000 microfarads instead of 100. Now because we're dealing with relatively high frequency noise when we're building this circuit you want to make sure that all of the ground points are connected to a relatively decent sized ground plane and have very short legs. So to achieve that what I've done is I've used SMD capacitors in parallel with larger electrolytics and I've built the circuit on a small PCB just by scoring the circuit with the knife. So let's have a look at the circuit. Here is one that I prepared earlier. Uh, let's zoom in a little bit so we can give everybody a look. The boost converter I'm using, by the way, is an MT3608, which is a really common one on eBay and AliExpress and that kind of thing. It goes for about a buck fifty. Here is my circuit. We've got the inductor and the capacitor on the input. The transistor is hiding right in there. We've got the capacitor for our multiplier and then I've soldered something on the output so we can plug it into our oscilloscope to get a good voltage me measurement. Just so you know that I'm not lying to you, let's have a measurement on the input of the switching converter. So we've got 5 volts on the input.
and on the output we've got about 10 volts. So, for our very first test, let's see if the proof is in the pudding and we'll plug it into the amplifier again. Turn up the volume. And this time you can't hear anything at all, so that seems like a promising start. But let's have a look at what we see on the oscilloscope. I've got a oscilloscope input over here. We plug that in and we can immediately see an enormous improvement with our noise floor has dropped down to something like 4 millivolts from 260 millivolts peak to peak. So, this circuit seems like a relatively promising and compact way of dealing with switching noise, particularly for your low power audio circuits. Uh, this circuit is primarily going to be better for circuits that draw something like up to about one or 200 milliamps. Uh, the reason being that once the current draw starts getting higher, we'll start dissipating a lot of heat in Q1, but 100 milliamps should be enough for circuits such as uh, microphone preamplifiers, power supplies for operational amplifiers, perhaps small headphone amplifiers and things of that nature. Um, so I hope this circuit can help remove a very frustrating problem for you and as always, build an experiment uh, with the circuit yourself and have a good one.